Welcome to HQ Live. I'm Kim Sandberg. I'm a studio educator here at Handy Quilter. And with me today is Amy Domkey. She is one of our national educators. And she's with us today to talk all things vintage. Linens, quilts, how to care for them, kind of a little bit of a trunk show. I'm super excited about this. Me too, because I love everything vintage. Um, which is kind of funny because I my decor style tends to be a little bit modern, but mm -hmm. I love throwing vintage accents in, yeah. and I just love linens and textiles in general, so yeah, the, 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 I'm very tactile. Very tactile, yeah. I know. It's a problem a lot of us quilters have, yes. isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, I'm sure everyone right. can relate. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I know that um, my first experience with vintage linens was my grandmother like opening up her cedar trunk and like pulling out these old quilts that her mother and grandmother had made and like we weren't allowed to touch them. So I'm super excited to actually get my hands on some of this stuff today. So awesome. should we dive in? Yes. Um, All right. So um, I got started in vintage linens mm -hmm. um, because I, I am one of like, I don't even know how many cousins I have, but okay. I'm like the youngest. So my um, Mima, uh -huh. she was the crafter in the family, mm -hmm. um, did a lot of um, embroidery, things like that. But I didn't get any of her stuff because by the time yeah. I got, there's nothing left for me after yeah. all the older ones got it. Yeah. So um, I really would see a lot of people saying, oh, this is a quilt that my grandma made or this is my quilt my aunt made. And I was like feeling really sorry for myself yeah. that I didn't have any of those. Um, I do have one quilt that my mother bought that I'll show you in a little bit. Okay. Um, so. I, one of my favorite things to do is visit garage sales and, mm, yeah. and antique stores and junk yacht lots and I yeah. just, I don't actually buy a lot of stuff when I there, mm -hmm. go there but I love looking and I just started yeah. purchasing um, little things like tea towels and okay. things like that at the beginning and then it just progressed into quilts and all sorts of things and it just grew into this entire kind of collection hobby that I have now and um, awesome. which I think is very healthy to have hobbies. I totally agree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. And I love when hobbies tie into like, like work too, our work right? and everything yes. and our, our passions. Right. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I try to sometimes I justify buying um, I probably spend a little too much money on maybe a vintage top or quilt mm. to thinking, oh, I can weave this into my work somehow, mm -hmm. but really it's just for me. And <laughs> so, that's okay. And that's, that's okay. okay too. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, so a lot of this stuff from garage sales, secondhand stores, things like that. So yeah. first first things were, you want Right. This one I want to talk about uh, care and maintenance awesome. of quilts okay. first. So this is just a little section of a, of a vintage quilt. <gasps> I cut up. Yes, oh I gosh. did. <gasps> um, it, this looks great okay. because I have quilted it to death. I, yeah. you could, uh, she can see it. It is yeah. tight, tight ribbon candy all through this quilt yeah. um, because it was hand pieced mm -hmm. and when you laid it flat, even after I, I hours ironing it and starching <laughs> it, it still just had all these little lumps and things on it. Yeah. It was never going to be this this beautiful quilt and it also was a small size, like it, it was ripped down one size mm -hmm. and it wasn't quite, it wasn't maybe lap size-ish, mm -hmm. but um, I just loved it because it's all feed sacks and yeah. I loved the scrappiness because yes. that's really what speaks to me decor wise. Yeah. And so what I did with this one is I ended up I wanted to make some curtains. I have a vintage kitchen oh, fun. and it has open shelving at the bottom because I have okay. this big old farm sink at oh, the top and nice. I, I could probably get you a picture of it. Okay. Um, and uh, I wanted to cover up that open shelving oh, with, yeah. you know, back in the like 40s, they yeah. had like the little gingham curtain that yeah. went under there. Well, you know, we're quilters, so I wanted a quilt. Uh, of course. <laughs> and um, I think I bought this, I actually bought this top. Mm -hmm. um, in Paducah. Oh, fun. Um, at their auc their charity auction. Oh. And okay. they had a charity auction one year when I was at the show. It was off to the side. I think it was um, some ladies group doing it, oh. maybe a guild. Probably, yeah. And you, it was like a silent auction and mm -hmm. you just bid on it. And I didn't, I probably, I, I don't, I don't think I paid too much, maybe $35 for this mm. top. But I really wanted it. Um, 
and I probably got it so cheap because it was not well made. Right, um, right. Um, and uh, what I did is I went ahead and laundered this top. Now okay. the reason you can put them in the laundry, Ooh. but bef when I do that, I inspect them first. Okay. The, the stitching was actually pretty tight. Okay. It looks like whoever made it never did any, it didn't have any like, a lot of times you'll find these tops and you can tell um, this one that I've done, you can actually see how it's been laundered. I can tell that when I got this top, this was an unfinished top when I got it. Right. Um, it had been tied. Uh, and you yeah. can tell that yeah. it had been tied. Yeah. A lot of times, and a lot of times you'll get these that um, they had been hand quilted mm -hmm. and you can tell that they'd been taken apart right. and then the top is resold. It's like the back disintegrates or right. the batting does and so mm -hmm. they take them apart. Okay. Yes. So this one I could tell had really never had anything done to it. Oh, so okay. I felt pretty confident that I could put it in the laundry. Okay. So I put it in my, I have a nice newer set of washing machine and dryer. Mm -hmm. And I have a great delicate cycle. Oh, nice. And so okay. I always, when I put them in my laundry, I always wash them on a delicate cycle. Okay. Most of the time in cold mm -hmm. with a color catcher. Okay, yeah. And um, and uh, I, I use a multitude of products. This one was not really that dirty. It okay. smelled a little bit. Right. But for this one I used, um, I usually use like woolite drift mm. or uh, Tide Clear, any so of the those. the really gentle soaps. The gentle soaps. They don't have any dyes in right, them. Right, right, the gentle gotcha. soaps. Okay. Um, I do like using Retro Clean. Oh, okay. But yeah. I can't always get it. Right, right. So I, the reason I went to, I started using the uh, readily available yeah. dish soap from, that I could get at my grocery store. Oh, absolutely. But I do stick with the no dyes, gentle, mm -hmm. baby stuff. Yeah. Draft works really, really well. Yeah. Um, and uh, I wash it on gentle. Um, I don't usually dry them. Mm -hmm. I will then line dry them line or dry lay them, them flat okay. to dry. So that they don't fray anymore. Well, or so any they don't fray anymore. Yeah, okay. That's correct. And um, so that's what I did with this. And okay. then I just couldn't get it to lay flat, so I quilted it to death. And then awesome. I, I cut it up and made the cutest little curtains for this kitchen. All it. It, basically, it's the bottom, yeah. bottom cabinets yeah. of this kitchen. Yeah. And it just looked great. It was the perfect size because I only needed this much, right. and like the kitchen's really small. It's maybe yeah. as big as this table. Okay. So um, it was. It worked great, and I had just enough left over to do a little throw pillow for um, the the couch that's in the oh, next nice. room. So I was really happy with this. I know that. I have gotten some uh, haters out there uh. that just say don't ever cut up a quilt. Well, this is my theory, yeah. okay, and I, this is my theory, and that's okay. I don't, if it's a beautiful quilt top, and mm -hmm. it's made really well, and I can make it a stunning piece, of course, I'm not going to cut that one up. Of course. But this one was a weird size, and the fact that it not never, it had never been quilted. Quilted, and the fact that it wasn't pieced very well. Yeah. So um, I did some research, and basically from even up to the 70s, mm -hmm. Girls were made to make quilts, right, especially right. in the early 1900s, 20s, mm -hmm. 30s, 40s. Mm -hmm. If they were in home ec, they had to make a quilt. Right. If they were in any type of um, group like 4-H or Girl Scouts mm -hmm. or something similar to that, there's a lot of girls out there that were forced to do these quilt tops. Yeah. And that's why we have all these undone tops yeah. is because they're like, okay, I did it. I got my grade. Yeah. I'm never going to do it again. Check, Moving done. <laughs> and um, so I don't really feel like I am no. harming anybody's no. painstaking work. I think if they were um, like a mad quilter, like we are these days, yeah. if they were like quilting was their thing, their pieces probably are already finished and yeah. look beautiful. Yeah. So, well, um, and I think you're still honoring that maker because right. you have found a new use for that quilt. Right. You know, I, I have a, a vintage quilt that I got that my great grandmother made mm -hmm. and the center of it had completely worn out mm -hmm. and my aunts threw it in the garbage. And the only way that we could, well, I they, they let me keep it. Like you were talking about how not getting any of the quilts. Yeah. I took and cut um, pieces out of the edge and put them in frames. Yeah. And uh, that's how I've honored that quilt. Mm -hmm. And trying to keep it in its original state, mm -hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't right. worth it, right? Right. So right. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. I love it. So I use them and I love to make pillows. I like yeah. to make, it, I make Christmas stockings and I just, let's use it because I do have 
I have some beautiful finished vintage mm -hmm. quilts yeah. that I display in my living room mm -hmm. that I bought complete. Like right. I didn't right. finish them. Right. And they were full, they're beautiful, and yeah. I have them on display. But if it's a quilt that I can't display, yeah. I, I'm not going to just keep it in a drawer. No, so. no. Why not Why not honor the maker and use it? I yep. love it. I think that's fantastic. Have so. you, so I've got a question for you about, you know, reusing them. Mm -hmm. Have you ever made, like, jackets or clothes out <gasps> of Yes, I just did. Okay, because that's, I want to do that. Like, I have a quilt all picked out. Right. I just haven't gotten there's, out my rotary cutter. <laughs> there's a girl on Instagram, and I could just kick myself for not knowing her name. Um, but she makes uh, clothing out yeah, of yeah. It's, old it's quilts. A thing. It's a thing. I, I follow her. I love it. I got inspired, and I just finished um, kind of it, it's a kind of an apron dress, uh -huh. and um, it was made out of a vintage quilt. I love and it. um, it's the only problem is it's super heavy and yeah. warm. Yeah. So <laughs> January wear, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> but no, no I think I think that's an awesome way to honor mm -hmm. the maker mm -hmm. is is repurposing those and using them. Right. Right. That's fantastic. Awesome. So, okay. So that was that. So okay. let me show you a little bit about mending things. Yes. Um, so this is a, so this is a quilt top, and mm -hmm. that you can tell is oh, just. Wow. At, it's it's, loved. it's it's been loved. <laughs> oh. It's falling apart. Look at the edges. Oh my goodness! And um, so this is definitely one that I have cut. Yeah. This is, I've used pieces of it mm -hmm. um, for some stuff, and um, but I like to keep it for when I do um, trunk shows or classes on vintage quilts yeah. because it's a prime example of. Um, you know, what to look for on quilts that you might want to save or what you can use. Mm -hmm. So here I have some examples of, if you have a quilt, let's, but let's say, I don't know who made this quilt. Mm -hmm. I actually found my husband years ago, um, about five years ago, used, we used to have a business where we bought houses and refurbished them mm -hmm. and then um, rented them out. Okay. And a lot of the houses we got were from, um, elderly people that had passed and yeah. their family didn't want the house anymore. Right, right. So a lot of times there was junk in the oh, yeah. in the houses. This is a quilt that came out of a box in the basement that the oh, family wow. had left and there were um, five quilts in it. Oh my word. And m my husband, <laughs> who married to a quilter, <laughs> knew not to throw that away so he brought them home to me and, um, and a lot of them were like this in this yeah. condition. But two of them were absolutely fabulous, and they are in my living room right now. Oh. And so, um, but you just never know. No. But let's pretend this is my, my, you Great know, grand. Meemaw made this, yeah. and it's been passed down to me, <coughs> excuse me, and um, I want to preserve it. Right, right. Even if it's so ratty oh, yeah. and... Well, it's like the quilt that I got from my great grandmother. Right. It was like it was in a condition like this. Right, and I I really want to preserve it for the sentimental value, right. not really to use it. Right. So I have a couple of um, ways. Most of the time, if uh, someone wants to preserve it, I will get like this netting. I have two different oh. kinds on here. This one's a little thinner than this okay. one, but either one of them work. And I would actually put on the back here. I put an uh, additional piece, this I just used white fabric, muslin mm -hmm. is fine, yeah. you could put whatever you want on it. Most of these antique quilts have just a muslin back anyway, yep. um, so I put a new, would put a new piece on the back, load this on my long arm, mm -hmm. put the quilt on, no batting, no extra batting, but put the quilt on right. as the top, and I would and I lay this netting over. Okay. And if you notice, so the quilt, the part that's not done right yeah. here, it has it has hand stitched. It has hand stitched, and it's just completely falling oh, apart it is. here. It is. Um, wow. So this I really can't. It's it's stitched here. Um, I can't. If I want to preserve the quilt, I can't worry about preserving every aspect of the quilt. Right. There's just it's just impossible to do right. that. Right. So the number one thing for me is I want to preserve the quilt to look at it mm -hmm. and bring back those family memories. Right. So the best way to do that is to do this and and um so you lay this it? over it and then I st okay. stitched a simple meander. I matched the thread to the cream color. Yeah. Um, on it because if I had done th red it oh, would have yeah. just really stood out. And if you look on the part that's not quilted, it is white thread that they I, used. I was going to say, I noticed that that was the original quilter's right. thread choice. She right. did pick what white thread to hand quilt it with. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you can imagine if you do this over a whole quilt, it is now not going to fray anymore. No. And it's stable. Yeah. 
and I can now fold this up and keep it. Um, you can actually take this to your dry cleaner oh. and have them um, package it up as if it was a wedding dress. Oh, and they okay. use that acetone-free paper right. and, um, and they seal it up, which if you just want to keep it as a family heirloom, I would suggest to do that. Okay. Certainly, I'm one of these people, if it's a family heirloom, it needs to be out. Yeah. So I would um, then put it wherever, whether you have it folded on a shelf yeah. or over, you know, hang it up or something like that. Yeah. Um, if you would, if you're going to hang this, you definitely need to do a medium. This is kind of a medium meander I did Density. on it mm -hmm. because once you hang it, this oh, batting in here it, it just pulls it down. Yeah. And by doing a medium dense stitch on here, it's going to keep it. So something like this actually would be better folded and yeah. laid across something. Yeah. If you're going to hang it up, maybe just for very short periods of time. Right. For a family party for or fa something, family just party. for a yep. day or something. Right. And yeah. if you look right here, there's a big hole Aww. in the quilt right here. And um, I just took a, a doily and put it underneath the, um, the, netting. the netting and then stitched right over on top of it so you don't see this big hole right there. That is so fun. That is so fun. And that's... Yeah. My, um, I had one grandma that crocheted a lot, mm -hmm. so I have a lot of these right. <laughs> kicking around. I actually just inherited a lot of crocheted <laughs> stuff from my husband's grandmother, uh -huh. so I'm kind of excited to use those. Oh, to as use well. that, okay. Yeah. And did you, you just use a glide foot? Would be my I guess. Glide on foot, this. yes, totally, yeah, absolutely. And you just right. use like a. Did you use a cotton thread or? Did you just use? I think I actually used a polyester okay. thread. Um, I like it because it's not going to deteriorate. Right. And um, there's less linty yeah. and things like that. Absolutely. And really, once you've gone to this point, yeah. there's not you're, there's not really a value you're saving right. because no, it, it's no. emotional to you yeah. or me. It's but, a sentimental value. Right. So right. once you've done this, I don't worry about I just pick I pick the, the thread to match the color perfectly. Right. Right. So. Right. Well, this is, th what a good idea. What a good idea. And then it's preserved for the next generation. Right. So. Okay. Oh, we can set that down and set we'll this one down. We'll just set this one right back here. Okay. Now, so also talking about um, things to do. Let's wait on this one. Let's preserve. go here. Oh, you want to do this one first? Okay. Yeah. So I talk about not every quilt can I even wash. Oh, Or, yeah. oh, or yeah. even clean. Yeah. So this is all silks. Oh, mostly silks. And it's I just. I covet one of these. Yeah. <laughs> so um, a neighbor actually just gave this to me. Oh my word. And, How do you um, know these people? And, oh. I don't, and she's a quilter. And, and she gave it to you? She inherited a whole bunch of quilts and she pulled out the best ones for her and gave me the rest. And I'm like, well, if this was her reject, I don't know what those other ones look oh like because this was pretty pr pretty. This pretty. is amazing. And look at it's, this crazy quilt. It's wow. just, um, oh, that it's is embroidered just gorgeous. perfectly. Look at and all those hand stitches. All this hand. Look at all this. This and is, and you can see that it's around this. I like, know. That's just amazing. Well, and you can tell that this um, a lot of this embroidery thread is actually silk. You can see by right. the sheen on it, and mm -hmm. a lot of the fabrics are silk. Right. Most of the fabrics are silk. Wow. There's a few like There's, polyester. Yeah, as you can see there, like that is like, completely it's deteriorated. Gone. It's gone. Yeah. And oh, I mean, I'm just look at that. That, she, that whoever did this, it was so that fun. That is so. That is this. This embroidery is just bonkers. It is. Wow. And so this one, I obviously cannot wash. No. It's, oh heavens no. It smells decent. I yeah, always no. smell things. It smells. Um, it smells vintagey, but not like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you, not you can bad. tell that it's been well preserved. Right. Like preserved. In a good way right. is what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so I, it's funny that my husband laughs if I'm in a garage sale or yeah. a flea market. I'm constantly picking up the linens and smelling yeah. them first because it just gives me a really good idea of how actually oh, clean yeah. it is. Well, so, and you can smell if it's like mildewy or woolly, right, which right. you don't want to go near. Yeah. And um, and if well, oh, wow. if it's really there's a date. Sorry, I oh, just wow. found a date in this one right there. It says 1891. So this so is as a patch. Yeah, it's a I little. I think it's a patch. I think so. No, it's a, it's a label. 1891. Oh, it is. It's like a label. Um, it's got the selvage of the fabric right there, but that's right. a date. That, that, that tells a you a lot about this quilt. It is amazing. It is. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but obviously I can't. No, um, I can't, can't wash, wash it. it. No. And with like this piece with it yeah. deteriorated. Yeah, shot. I can't. Yeah. I don't really want. It's shattered. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really want to replace this because I no. love this um, stitching. Stitching. So this actually quilt, this quilt would actually be a perfect piece 
if you have a large wall to frame. Yes. So I, I would actually frame it behind, um, you know, high quality glass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even though I don't know who made it, yeah. you know, but we don't know who made oh it. We don't gosh. know what time frame it is. I could probably have it appraised, but this would make a great uh, wall art. Yes, it I would. I think it absolutely uh, would. Which is probably what it will, what, what it would be, because there's no, um, there's really no fixing this. Yeah, yeah, and right. it's too, it's way too delicate to think. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to quilt this and even like, mm -hmm. hang, just hang it on the wall to display. It's too delicate for right. that. Right. Absolutely. This so, is amazing, and yeah. it's all on a foundation. Yeah. So would you, okay, so here's a question for you. Would you consider quilting something like this if it was in really good condition? If it was in really good condition, I actually would consider mm -hmm. quilting it. This piece, particular piece, probably not because yeah. of all of the great embroidery on yeah. it. Yeah. But um, sir, there, I have quilted many what I call crazy quilts yeah. Yeah. Um, that have a little bit of this. In fact, I have one now that was my husband's grandmother. Oh wow! Um, she quilted it, and she quilt. She made it in like in the nineteen. 70s probably okay. and so it's got a lot of that polyester oh, indestructible <laughs> yeah stuff and she just did a simple she did a simple um uh embroidery between yeah. all of her pieces nothing this elaborate yeah and it has that one i'm definitely going to quilt it was tied okay oh, and yeah. um, i'm going to untie it and quilt it because it's not it's going to deteriorate if i yeah. don't some of the um I don't know those those the fabrics yarn. like the Melame oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's already disintegrated oh, on that yeah. quilt. So do a little repair and stuff. Yeah, but and yeah, that one this I will is quilt. beautiful. Oh. Okay, so frame something like this is good for framing. Right. Good way to preserve it. Yes. So I'll just set this one back here. Now this one is um, one I purchased at an auction. Uh -huh. It was a charity auction for oh, wow. our local food bank Look at that this. I went to, and this oh, is. My God all feed sacks hand stitched hand stitched it is amazing but if you look at it this piecer was not good <laughs> i mean it, she has the worst stitches ever it's like she was she did i she i bet she just worked on it a little bit at a time and she just wanted to get it done right. the the good thing about it it's I, I don't know if you guys can pick that up on the camera but it she just stitched big large yeah, did, and big a width. lot of them so these this is probably why this quilt is still intact yeah it's because she stitched was that actually over stitched it's it. embroidery floss too if you yeah, look at it yeah it's heavy heavy yeah. thread so you could when you feel it you can feel how the rough texture. it is it's just <laughs> so that's probably why it's still yeah. available but it's just i had to buy it because it's all feed sacks it's amazing though and hand stitched that i can't imagine how many hundreds if I not thousands of mm -hmm. hours right. went into this. So this is one that um, I, so this is actually the top of the quilt and this is I think they probably had on their bed mm -hmm. because if you yeah. look at this side how much brighter it is. Yeah. So yeah. it was obviously that this side was well, the. And she had this little edge she put yeah. on it too. Yeah and yeah it's this is probably the side that was not exposed to sunlight because yep. it's so much brighter than Absolutely. the other side. Yeah. Um, and I I thought about putting this on my long arm mm -hmm. with this this side up oh. and just doing a simple quilting on it yeah. um, with like a muslin underneath it. Yeah. But I just haven't gone there yet. It's yeah. beautiful and it this yeah. hang this I have a antique ladder in my living room. Oh fun. And this does hang on that in okay. my living room. So I am enjoying it right now. Oh, good. But uh, there may become a time when I decide to quilt on it, but right now I'm just enjoying the vintage fabrics. Mm -hmm. And I love this because a lot of times if I buy a quilt and mm -hmm. I think it may be feed sacks, I know this one's feed sacks because it had the family history with oh. it. Oh. Um, that's one thing about, I spent more on this, a couple hundred dollars I think. Uh -huh. And um, because it had the family history and the family that donated it. Wow. So I know these are feed sacks. And then I can pick up, if I go and I oh. purchase a Another, quilt top yeah. that um, you can find I, I look on here for it to see if it's there. Wow. Um, or something similar, because that helps me date it a It's like bit. your own authenticator. Right. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah. love it. My little catalog. And, and, when you, and when you display this at home, do you display it with this side out then, with the brighter side I out? I actually flip it, because okay. I don't want it to get too dusty, because I, I am not going to wash this no. side no, uh, no, ever. No, no. And, no um, it would, it would yeah, fall and, apart. And <laughs> I, so I don't want it to get too dusty. Yeah. I will vacuum it, though. Oh, okay. Um, 
I have a I have a little attachment on a mm -hmm. nice small vacuum that I can vacuum it. But I'll flip it. Some days it'll be this side out. Some days it'll be this side out. That's smart. That's so. smart. Just Another to keep it tip. from getting a crease yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. So and fold it differently, all those good things we do, right? Right. Um, and like this quilt top, I think mm -hmm. this is another one I bought in Paducah. I spent a lot of time at that booth. <laughs> um, if you notice it, it's actually hand stitched. Uh -huh. I don't really know what era it's from. It looks like maybe the 50s. 50s, yeah. Um, but what struck me is these random bright red yeah. things in here. So I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, do I want this? Do I not want this? I like it as a quilter because it has negative space. Yeah, this white. Right, and so I'm like, okay, this will be a great one to quilt. And as I, of course, I did the smell test. Yes. It smells great. It smells great. <laughs> they washed Vintage it. But if you look, here is machine stitched. Oh my goodness. But the look whole rest of this block is hand stitched. Look at that. Right. That is crazy. So. It almost looks like she went in and like put this piece in here, right? Maybe to, it maybe had to make it fit or something, yeah. and then yeah, with the other block. Yeah. So my and if you look, there's some not yeah, but not all the some of the red is hand pieced, yeah, hand stitched. So it, yeah. so to me that huh. tells me this is probably <laughs> an older quilt top that somewhere along the line mm -hmm. somebody fixed. I think you're and right. And fixed it with their machine. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, she um, took she took that box of blocks she inherited. Right, and it looks yeah, I think it was the blocks because the most of the machine stitching is, is per the uh, blocks log together. Cabin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're but this exactly one right. was si stitched on. Yeah. yeah, look at that. So wow. So I always look at stuff like that, and so this one because it's already been fixed, it's half machine sewn, it's half hand stitched. This is a great one for me to quilt in a modern way. Right. Um, I don't. I'm not worried about keeping the integrity of the quilt. Yeah. Um, obviously somebody didn't want it or else it wouldn't have been oh, yeah. up for sale. Yeah. And um, so this was is gonna be a really fun one to do mm -hmm. um, and to quilt it in a modern way. Well and this and this one is a good one to quilt too because it's it's flat. It's flat. It, it looks like it's, it's pretty it's okay decently piece. square. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it wouldn't be too hard to just give it a good press and load it and mm -hmm. go, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, that's and fun. This is out of my collection. This oh, is the only quilt I that my mother bought. Really? Because my mother, she's a very modern woman. Uh-huh. And no quilting for her, huh? She just <laughs> liked a modern house. And I'm I'm surprised that she bought this. And uh -huh. what um she bought it because um back I grew up in Mississippi mm -hmm. and in the south there's a department store called Goldsmiths. Okay. It's no longer in, no, in existence. Yeah. Um and she happened to meet, um, I don't know if it was the daughter or the actual uh, lady that worked from late 1800s, early 1900s, wow. on through the 60s. She worked wow. for about 60 years for Goldsmiths wow. in, the, in Memphis, Tennessee, okay. in the men's tailoring department. Oh, wow. And she oh. made this quilt. Um, out of all men's swatches and some lady swatches from the tailoring department from all her years being wow. one of the seamstresses there. What and the backing history. is the lining they used in men's suits. Wow. Oh, that's a that would be a dapper suit right yes, there. Yes, <laughs> very much so. And it's fun to see it. Oh, and, it's a nice hand. Right. And she has and she did hand embroidered between it. Yeah. And it's tied. And I just want to show you how well it's tied. This is the top of the quilt. And oh, you can you barely can probably... see. She, you can tell that she knew what she was doing. Yeah, she was. She did. She was a she professional seamstress. Barely see That's it. That's not even, hardly even an eighth of an inch. Right. Just a little dot. So my thinking is, she knows how to tack things down, like men's mm -hmm. pockets oh, and yeah. stuff like that, or like do a blind hem. Yeah. Those kind of things. And well, I, yeah, I just love it because um, it's. Uh, it, it just tells such a it. story. Wow! Look at that. And. And you can't even the stitch it the ties. Look how oh how wow. tiny these are. Oh, she used um, she used like a floss, like a, yeah. actually it's a pearl cotton. Mm -hmm. It looks like. Yep. That's awesome. And uh, and wrap the edges for the binding, yep. self bound. And they're wow. just perfect. Like her seams are perfect. It lays flat. You can tell yeah, that this perfect. was done by a professional yeah. sewer. And that's what I love about it. And I can totally see, you know. 1950s like a girl suit. you know showing with her little pill hat on <laughs> and this green plaid suit and mm -hmm. stuff i just love it so oh. this is the um, one of the only things 
crafty mm -hmm. that you know com that I can say is in my family lineage, yeah. and so I just really love it. And I will say that um, I'm it's in such good condition. I only bring it out um, like at Christmas time. Yeah. Uh, and it stays in a cedar chest oh, otherwise. Smart. But I do bring it out because I, I'm one of those believers, why keep it in a chest? Oh, yeah. it, so, but yeah. I do bring it out um, for uh, you know a holiday party, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. I'll bring it out and hang oh, it up. So And display it. Yeah. And, and a quilt like this, because this is like wool, mm -hmm. how, so how would you care for it? You obviously are not gonna wash it. Because, yes, mm. um, actually I don't, <laughs> Kim was making fun of me because it is a little <laughs> dusty. Um, she gave it a big, and we got poof, a little poof, poof <laughs> of it of dust because I haven't washed it, uh -huh. and um, and that's okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wash something like right. this either. I, mean, I could probably dry clean it, mm -hmm. um, like you would a men's suit. Oh, true. Um, I didn't think I, about that. And it would probably be fine, and yeah. it probably needs it now because I've had it's been in my possession for about twenty years. Okay. So, and I have never laundered it. Yeah. So I would oh. say I could. It's probably about time. <laughs> it's, it's in good to, condition. It though. is in great it condition. It is in good condition. Um, but, oh, but it's just, gorgeous. And what a neat piece of family history. Right. And it, and I love the fact that we have the story behind yeah. the quilt. So. Yeah. Always makes it more meaningful. Right. Absolutely. So, Want to show um, a little bit more about fixing some quilts oh, and yeah. what to look for. So this is a quilt um, mm -hmm. top that I actually got from Handy Quilter. Oh. I had asked me to quilt this. One of Brenda's it, finds, I'm yes. sure. <laughs> and it had a couple of, I don't know if you guys can see that one. It's, it's got, got a little, little bit of damage right there. Yeah. And because I repaired that really well. Th because this is such a weird color. Yeah. So I have I buy um, whole sets of solids oh, colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um and I just I just buy like um, fat, fat quarter packs. Mm -hmm. And so I usually can find a piece of new fabric that I can patch. Now, this one I mm -hmm. knew it's slightly off. You can barely tell that that fit the fill in the hole is slightly off, and the reason but I only when you point it out right. really do you see it. Well, my purpose for this one because I wanted to quilt it, um, mm -hmm. it kind of fancy, what I call yeah. fancy quilting. Yeah. Um, Let's turn that around. Okay. And um, my purpose for patching this one is solely so that this quilt's going to be hung up on a wall. Right. And I did lots of, you know, lots of quilting on Gorgeous it. Gorgeous quilting. And um, the point was so that your eye wouldn't be drawn to a patch. Right, right. And so the easiest way for me to do that is to keep as much of the original material as possible. Now I could have, if, I, if this was a quilt that was gonna be just used or, yeah. or just in my collection, I might have cut this away and put a perfectly square patch on top, mm -hmm. but that you would notice that if you right. were looking at it. Right. But because this quilt may, um, my intention is to hang it up, mm -hmm. um, I wanted just the eye not to follow it. And so that by sticking it underneath there, I keep as much of the original quilt fabric yeah. as possible. And this fabric was very, very thin. It oh. is super thin. Like the, that stuff that you can almost see light yeah. through when you hold it up. And I think this was made out of men's shirts. Oh, look at that. You can tell that it was all hand stitched. Here, should we flip oh, it one more time? time? Yeah, look at that. Um, wow. It's, it's all, um, I think oh, all yeah. of these are men's, like this looks I like a so. shirt. It does, it, feels, it does. It feels like that Thinner. little plaid in there yeah, yeah. so I think on most of this is shirty material yeah and I liked it because that's gorgeous um, it was I picked this one because I love the weird color of this uh, yeah this and, uh, not a combination lilac yes. with a peach with red right. with black with brown <laughs> right it's just a weird color combination I thought oh I, I like weird so I did that it was hard because this was actually hand stitched with black thread. Oh goodness. And it, you can kind of see it shows. And oh even, yeah, you can see the shadow. Even where there's you no black. You can see black. the shadow. Right. right even in, in here. even here where there's squares where there's no black, yeah. you can see the black thread the along. The black thread along the edges. Right. Yeah. And I even right here, like you can, this, it's stitched with black thread. Oh my gosh. Um, it's so what she had available. It's huh? what she had available and I was really fretting over it because I wanted to hang this quilt up yeah. and I knew you'd be able to see it, but then I finally just had to give up going, you yeah. know, it is what it is, yeah. leave the black thread alone and if it shows that it shows through. In hindsight, had I used black batting, probably would have been a better 
oh. thing. I, I had started quilting it. Didn't think of that. I had quilted a good portion of it before I thought, oh, <laughs> ding, 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 black batting. <laughs> so at least next time I'll remember to do that. Although so. it would have, it would have changed like the it would have brightness of the quilt. For yeah. sure, because this fabric is super thin. Yeah. And so if I had used black batting, this would definitely have dulled it quite yeah. a bit. My so. guess is though, when this is hanging up, you're not really gonna see that. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it casts a little bit of shadow. And right. your quilting on this is amazing, and by the way. What, what's, there's, Gorgeous. do we have time for me to oh, tell you a little yeah. funny story? Yeah. So <laughs> I was really baffled. I knew I, I wanted, the challenge for Handy Quilter was to quilt things in a way that right. a normal piecer would not have intended. Yeah. So I wanted to do that. And I don't know what I was thinking that day, but these little arches that I put in here, yeah. and I just used a ruler. I meant for them to be a real circle. Oh, I and, like it though. And I don't know what I was thinking, and I, you I went stitched. Corner. I did, and I stitched the whole first row of my throat space, and then stepped back, and I'm like, well, that's not what I meant to do at all. <laughs> so I kind of had to happy, improvise happy a little accident. bit. Happy accident. It was a happy accident. Actually, and, I love and, it. Um, and I love, I quilt some of this is with Pro Stitcher, some of it's with rulers, and mm -hmm. some of it's free motion, and awesome. that's really how I like to quilt. So. I love it. I love it. I think that this is a great. Great, right. this looks fantastic. Right. And if you notice, this has no other, the other corners have oh, uh, sashing. sashing. There's one end, one end that doesn't. So that would have been and the end that, uh, end that would go up under the pillows, right? Right, well, you That's know, That's what I knows, was always told, who knows though. Who knows if it had an end and it came off. I don't know where this came from. Um, I'm sure it was probably bought off eBay oh, or yeah. something like that. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. So we don't know what happens to it. and. I get asked all the time, well, why don't you just match as close as you can and put a border on there to make it finished? And I'm like, I like to think I about know. what was she thinking? Mm -hmm. You know, what happened? What happened to that piece of, yeah. um, and this is one for sure that was tied. Yeah, yeah. So it was probably used at some point. Oh, so and yeah. So it might have just deteriorated or maybe it was, this was the end where their feet were there and they yeah. forgot to cut their oh. toenails and they <laughs> scratched it up. <laughs> <laughs> so they tucked that in yeah. at the end of the bed, bed and yeah. it wore off because it always got tucked in. Right. Yeah, it's hard to say. So, so I like to leave quilts a lot. Yeah. Like this quilt back here. Oh yeah, this one. Um, this is all a, a top that was tied. Uh -huh. I actually bought it and um, took the ties off. But I bought, I didn't unfold it when I bought it, so I didn't know it was cut off. It was on cut the on the edges. That right. is just bonkers to me, but obviously somebody wanted it to be a different size. So. Wanted it to be a different size, or maybe the edges were frayed. Oh, and, true. And, yeah. um, cause I bought it from a vendor at a quilt uh -huh. show. Yeah. And maybe she cut it because yeah. she wanted to sell it. Yeah, clean up you the know, edges. Clean it up, but, yeah. uh, but I just leave it. I don't mind the yeah. imperfections at all. Yeah. So well, um, I think it's what makes them quirky and right. it gives them the fun uh, character that vintage quilts have, right? right. Yeah. Um, now this is a, another vintage top that mm -hmm. um, came off of eBay, mm -hmm. and it was already bleeding. So they had washed oh. the top. Let's let's open this up a little bit okay. so we can take a little bit of a closer look at that where it's bleeding. Okay. This so this block right here, uh -huh. you can see, is really. I, I, I originally thought that was like a little bit of like a watercolor effect there, but it's actually, <laughs> yeah. well it is, it, it is, is. <laughs> water caused it, yeah. but you can see that the green and the blue bled off of this, mm -hmm. and that's a flower sack, you think? Um, it looks like it, I'm not really sure, yeah. it, it does, they it do feel like textury. it. Yeah. Um, but uh, this quilt top, bought off eBay, it was hand piece, hand stitched piecing, mm -hmm. um, but it has flaws, like you yeah. can see these uh, stains. stains here. So on this one, I was like, okay, I want to quilt this. This is just for me personally. Mm -hmm. I wanted a quilt to hang up in my um, studio. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is a great one. I love, love the colors. Yeah. And um, so I just, I didn't wash it till after I quilted it. Okay. And it had it been washed before? Well, it had because of the bleeding. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, okay. That's at least only, gotten wet at some point. At least right? gotten wet at some point. And okay. it's these, it, there's only two blocks like this, and it was just these two blocks. Everything else was color fast. Which makes Ooh. me think that it had been washed before. Yeah. Because I think most of them would have bled. Oh, that's true. Um, that's true. But, um, and I don't know if this is vibrant, more vibrant than mm -hmm. the other. So maybe this was a, a replacement block at some point. Oh yeah. I don't really Yeah. Yeah, so I like to think about things like that. Yeah. But I knew I was gonna quilt Figure it. Figure out the story. Right. And I so I quilted this and then I laundered it in delicate with uh, my whatever laundry soap yeah. I had. And I used, um, I put in actually 
three color catchers mm -hmm. in it. Because of this, I, yeah. want, I didn't know what it was going to do. And it, this actually lightened up quite a bit. Oh, really? Uh, so mm. I'm, it's only, I had just finished this not too long ago, and mm. I may wash it again with a color catcher uh -huh. because it held up really well. Yeah. And maybe it'll take a little bit more of this out. Yeah. I love, I love that you've washed this, though, because I, I look at this, and it now this looks like a quilt that, was finished many many years right. ago like it totally has that antique quilt look mm -hmm. but yet when I really look at it I'm like oh wait that's pro stitcher that's pro stitcher <laughs> yeah <laughs> so and, not and, not too old right <laughs> and I actually use this as a I, I did a video of um, I'm a fan of taking my quilt off on my machine and rotating it to yeah, do my borders. Me too. But um, sometimes you just don't have the time to do that. Uh, yeah. And so this is a pro stitcher block that oh. fits perfectly in my throat space. Nice. And it just happened to fit on this quilt perfectly, so I just did the edges all Made the way it down work. with that one. Yeah. Nice, nice. Well, so. this is gorgeous, and it, so. you know. And that doesn't bother me. No. I'm totally okay with it. I'm totally okay with the stain. Yeah, it's the character I, of the quilt. Right, I like to think, you know, they were huge coffee drinkers or oh, something, yeah, I don't totally. know. Yeah. Afternoon tea. Afternoon tea, got it on there. I think it's great, <laughs> right. I think it's great. No, that's a fantastic quilt. And I love that you quilted this one even though it's a vintage one, you quilted it so that it could be used now. Yes, I will use that quilt. It is, yeah. And it, no problem. So this is another, um, Oh, Hexies. Hexies <laughs> that I bought um, off an auction. Oh, wow. And Look haven't at that. done All anything. Hand piece. And look how good her stitching wow. is. Look how flat this is. This Usually was, they're like, whoo. Right, I don't know if you can see on the blue. She has some, you can tell it's beautiful. Hand, it's hand stitched. Oh my gosh. And it is just, perfect stitches tiny Ooh. little she must have got what one two three four maybe eight to ten stitches an inch yeah. that's pretty hard so how so, do you deal with something like this exactly so that's why I brought this one yeah okay we I got some edges here that are a little I don't have time oh I, there's yeah, actually a little tear there there's a even. little tear there so my when I get quilts like this what I like to do is mm -hmm. load my long arm mm -hmm. spread it out a little bit Let's spread it out I'll load my long arm, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of, you can find a lot of these grandmother flower gardens yeah. in garage sales and stuff, and I think because they didn't know what to do with these edges, yeah. and it they got overwhelmed or something. Well, yeah. And you can tell that it's never been stitched. No. Either. I can't find any tie holes. It hasn't been washed either, I don't yeah. think. It's, it's, it's in really good condition. Really good condition. Um, and so what I am going to do with this one is mm -hmm. I'm going to load my long arm. I'm going to find a complementary color mm -hmm. and I'm going to lay this on top and leave the raw edges ah, out but okay. so I'll have a straight edge here with fabric underneath it nice and you'll um, just leave these edges raw then and I'm gonna leave these edges raw and I may go back and do some sort of embroidery on the edges oh. um, so that the raw edges are held down Preserved. or I may yeah. couch with some really beautiful thin yarn like, like a like cotton a, or something yeah really nice really nice cotton uh mm -hmm. yarn maybe something that's you know from the time period yeah yeah um things like that but that i have oh. found is the easiest way because if i waited on myself to one oh. fix it <laughs> and do yeah. all these little edges i wouldn't it would just never get no, done no no so no. Um, that's the way I'm going to do this okay, one. Okay, that's really cool. So just put something underneath that. And then right. like that edge that, that was kind of right here that was right. coming apart. I can so just you'll just it. lay that flat? I'm just going to lay that flat and I would move it like this. This piece is, is ironed under. Yeah. So if I lay it like that, it's going to look finished. Oh yeah, and you'll just stitch right and over the top And then I'll just stitch that. right over the top. I'll probably get a little piece of pink. This is the only hole in yeah, this one. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a tear just right, right So if there. I lay it down just like that. Oh, you stitch will, it. When you I even quilt know. it, you'll never know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. You just so. have solutions for everything. I do. It's so great. Um, and after I complained about my mom not being crafty, <laughs> I was visiting her. Oh, and she said, she I, I have something for you. This was mine. I just got this. I had to bring it. Oh, this was mine and oh, my sister's. This way. Yeah. This oh was wow! My, and my uh, our baby blanket, and I How grew up in precious. Mississippi, so there's no oh, batting. Yeah, it's, it's completely finished. It's so very I think thin. my grandmother made this. Wow! And I hand I don't know, embroidered, right? What hand a, embroidered. What a treasure! It is. It's a perfect treasure. So I haven't decided 
what I'm going to do with the S. I am going to. I do know I'm going to quilt it, mm -hmm. and I'll. I don't know if I'm going to take it apart here because it's folded over yeah. with. A, it's just enveloped, isn't right? It? Yeah. Or if I'm going to leave it enveloped and maybe put this as an applique on top of something. Because it's all hand stitched right. along these edges, right. this top edge here. Yeah. So my guess is I'm going to use this as an applique piece on top of another mm. piece. Makes um, sense. As one big whole thing yeah. and do it. Yeah. So. Wow. Wow. And well, yeah. you do have a little craftiness in your, I did. In your I, jeans, I did. huh? I did. Well, it was, yeah. <laughs> Somewhere along the line. Wow, that's so neat. Okay. And then I just want to talk a little bit about things you can do. Like when I was first got Pro Stitcher, mm -hmm. this is one of the things that started me buying a bunch of vintage stuff. This is oh, a wow. like a 1960s tablecloth. Oh my gosh, everybody has a couple of these kicking yes. around, right? And I you're think, like, what do you do with them? I think I bought this for a dollar at a garage sale yeah. and um, it's not something we would use now. And I was learning Pro Stitcher at the time. Wow. And uh, I, I actually, this is hanging up in my studio. I love it. Uh, if, as, a, as someone that works in the business now, I notice a lot of mistakes mm. in it, but I don't point those out. Most no. people don't notice them, so I'm okay, and I really love looking at it. I so. love, too, that you use this variegated thread here mm -hmm. in the center. That is so fun to, like, add another, you know, this is all printed. Mm -hmm. It's printed. Yeah. And then you add this, your own, like, extra pattern to right. it as your extra touch. I think this is gorgeous. Yeah. And I've actually started now um, a little side business that mm -hmm. I am now buying tons of um, vintage tablecloths uh -huh. and turning them into baby blankets. Oh, and so, what a fun idea. Right, and it just is great. And yeah. Because they have all these beautiful blank centers. Yeah. And, um, you can just, as a quilter, they're really fun. Have some fun with them. Oh, this right. is so much fun. What a fun idea. I love that. And <laughs> what a fun. Your binding's really fun on that, too. That I know. That wiggly that stripe. stripe. That's way fun. Perfect. So this is um, a piece of, um, wow, I'm, the name oh. escapes me now. Oh, is this? Um, um, it's where they pull the thread. Yeah. Oh, goodness. I know the is name. It, but yeah, I know, I know what you're talking Is it, It's not. Oh, good heavens. Is it broidery? Oh, no, 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 it, no, no. Um, oh it's well. going to come to me as soon as we're it's done here. It's really amazing okay. handwork done by amazing, right. amazing. Because you actually like pull the threads out mm -hmm. of the fabric and then you use yarn or uh, like thicker thread to go in and create designs out of it. So you've actually right. pulled threads out of the weave, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. is, what it's, is what it is. Right. So um, wow. this is where ladies that could not afford Lace, Lace yeah. would make, um, and it's made out of cotton or linen. I know lin linen is a cotton, but it, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And they do, they pull it out and make all these designs so that they can have in. lace at home. Yeah, and, oh, um, that is amazing. So I bought, again, I bought this one, I think, for about $3. I'm pretty cheap when I'm searching in yeah. garage sales and stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's not flat. You can no. see how it, this it is, dips. Look at this. Totally dips down. It's not square. But I'm okay with that. I love that so, you like kept it that way. You didn't try to square it. I or didn't anything. try to square it up because if it's I had part tried of the to, character. right? If I tried to square it up, you'd cut, you'd lose. I lose some. I just, I, I wanted it just this piece. I, it's gorgeous. And um, I backed it with this gold yeah. um, underneath it, and it's just a gold. It's um, like a lining, isn't yeah, it? It's like, like soft a, like, and silky. I think it's satin. Mm -hmm. It's not silk, but it's shiny and mm -hmm. soft. So I wanted you to be able Contrast. to see the cut work. Mm -hmm. And then I just quilted it. This actually hangs up in my house. That is gorgeous. And the backing is, I actually... Is it vintage linen it's, too? Th it's a vintage linen that I bought in Paris. Wow. And oh, wow. So this is that <laughs> that Swiss dot material. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is material that, that probably um, would have been made at a lady's dress, sundress yes, or something yes, would have been made out yes. of. And I just had this one piece and I thought, oh, it's perfect for the backing of this. Mm -hmm. And I that's and what I did it and I carried it over to the front because the binding, it's yeah. both vintage. Yeah. So well it's such a fun um, binding, just creating that mm -hmm. that perfect border around the edge mm -hmm. of it. And I hang it up, it hangs you can see the dip in it, yeah. it doesn't hang straight, but I, I'm okay with it. It's still really pretty. I, and and you quilted this all on your long arm? All on some pro stitcher. This was early in my quilting career where I was still playing with it. Oh um, you did a beautiful job though. Yeah. And, and probably use your glide foot, right? Yes, for sure. Use my glide and foot. And what kind of thread did you use on this? Like you use a pretty delicate I think I just thread. used, I probably um, a 60 weight. Okay. White. 
Just a lighter thread. Just yeah. a lighter thread. Might That's have been a hundred weight uh, now gorgeous. that I look how tight it so, is. So, and and the batting is underneath the... Uh, yes, a, a very so thin cotton. A very thin cotton mm -hmm. there on the top. Okay, yeah. that is gorgeous. Wow. What a fun idea because, you know, I see things like this at like vintage shops mm -hmm. and they're gorgeous, but I'm like, I take them home and like put them in a cupboard and never do anything right. with them. Now, you can just hang them up. I got ideas. So, this is my last thing I want to show you. Okay. So, we buy a bunch of block, mm -hmm. vintage blocks. I got a stack of these vintage grandmother's oh, flower gardens. Wow. And they're um, just the blocks. They weren't actually put together. They into were a just quilt. the blocks. Okay. Yeah. I got a whole stack of them for like $10. Wow. This is just a partial of them. Fantastic. And uh, this is a quilt I actually use. I haven't bound it, and I have laundered this a gazillion I times. I can tell. It's really it's, soft. This is a this quilt sits on the back of our family room sofa. Nice. The dogs lay on it. I get on it. It's laundered a lot. Okay. So this is just, it's not muslin, it was true white cotton, okay. but it was uh, 108 wide. Oh, okay. And I put it on my long arm. I did all this straight line quilting. Ah. Then I went back and I just placed these down and just zigzag stitched around the edge. Your little wiggle like, stitch like my your little wiggle, arm. My little wiggle stitch around the edge. So it's still, ah. it's rough Edge. Yeah. Now these were these are vintage and they were hand stitched. Yeah. But they weren't particularly done well flat, yeah. or flat. Yeah. And I actually was teaching a class. Um, uh, these three ladies asked me to give. They had just bought long arms, uh -huh. and they wanted a free motion class. They live near me, and I invited them over. And I had this on my long arm, and I let them all stitch one of these. Wow. And if you look at it, there's just some they're are really all different. They're all different, and some are really good, and some are really bad. <laughs> but um, you can't see it. I knew hey. you would never be able to see the quilting yeah. in it. Yeah, no, you can't. They had the most fun doing oh. that, and um, and I just love it. That's and fantastic. It's, it's and I love down. I love that you've taken a vintage and turned it into a, a utility quilt, like you right. said. It lives on the back of the couch. It's surged on the edges. Yeah, I surge a lot of my um, quilts because I sometimes I don't have time to bind yeah. them right away. Yeah. And if I surge it, I know that I can go back and bind them at any oh, time. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it and so. it just keeps things all held together. Right. <sighs> and the reason it's so long is my husband's six forward. He wanted one that <laughs> covered them, and so it's kind of narrow and long. But uh, but I love it. It's soft. It's a great and oh, it's, nice. it's been laundered. So many times, and you can see that these aren't going anywhere. No, they're not. They're not. The edges even are hardly even frayed yeah. because you stitch them down really well. So. Wow. Oh my so gosh. That's something else you can do with them. Yeah. Well, Amy, you have just given us a wealth of ideas today. I feel like I just want to run out and start going to antique shops. I know. Like, we should go shopping. This I always <laughs> wonder should I should I tell people to do this because I want to just save it all for myself. But well, you can't I, shop in all the shops. Though, I know. Right. And I do know that there because girls were made to right. make these. There's so much of this out there yeah. that yeah. I don't think will run out in my lifetime. No, so. no. Well, and I think there's a lot of people who inherit this kind of stuff and they don't they don't know what to do with it. They don't yeah. know what to do with it, and so they sell it, and um, you know, it's our it's our score, right? Right. <laughs> we, we find this stuff and we can um, use it and love it. We think it's fantastic. Well, thanks so much for sharing all this well, with thanks us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, this has been so much fun. Thanks for joining us for this HQ Live. Um, be sure to like our video, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to join us again next month for another HQ Live.